Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. I'm recording this uh, video at a time when my throat uh, is absolutely awful, so my voice is all over the place, and I do apologise for that, but I wanted to keep getting these videos made, because um, um, I've got loads of stuff I want to say. And today I wanted to do another quick video about um, what is fast becoming my favourite game, and that's Warhammer Quest from Games Workshop. And what I wanted to do, really, is kind of like an introduction Sorry for the glare on that there. Um, kind of an introduction for uh, anybody who's thinking of getting into Warhammer Quest, um, doesn't know where to start, um, and also kind of like a stepping through um, what I think is a, is a good order for purchasing products in the line um, to get a good experience and gradually um, develop your range of miniatures for use with the game or whatever else. So first of all, obviously Silver Tower, um, Warhammer Quest Silver Tower is the first product that they released in the range, and it is a fully cooperative game, and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, the entire premise is that a group of disparate heroes have been thrown together inside a Silver Tower, um, which is controlled by by this guy in the background here. He's a uh, Chaos Sorcerer of Zinch. Um, he is sort of a very very strong magic user um, he's manipulating everybody he's like a puppet master and really everyone's just playing his little game um and yeah it's it's a really really good game and it's got a really interesting interesting premise and um it, it's a little bit meta it will constantly reference things like um it will suddenly treat the players like they like they like they really are the players of the game and the characters are miniatures and suddenly it sort of it'll take you out of that and, and say like your hero suddenly feels like he's compelled to do something against his will and then you have to move him a certain way and things like that it, it's, it's quite meta and it's, it's funny it's got some funny moments um but it's completely self-contained and um the way it works is that you you create a, a dungeon deck based on the mission you're going to undertake um, you flip the cards to, to reveal the sections of the dungeon as you explore, and then those cards will um, ask you to reference the adventure book, which actually contains text that furthers the story. Um, and it's a really, really good sort of story-themed storytelling experience with a really good core mechanism of dungeon crawling fun. The, uh, and like I say, it's fully co cooperative, so you don't need a games master but if you want to you can have somebody take on the role of the games master in which case that person will control the monsters and also um, read all the text from the book and things like that and lay out the maps as it gets revealed so um, probably a little bit more of a facilitator than, a, than an antagonist but um, they can still take control of the monsters and, and perform the actions and when in the, there's, there's always situations in these games where the players have to make a choice and players will generally go for the choice that's a little bit better for them for example if a monster has a choice of two um two heroes to attack the players may be able to game the rules slightly so the the monsters will attack the strongest opponent um, but if you've got somebody controlling those monsters for you then then you can do away with that sort of aspect of it so um so yeah although it's fully cooperative it's very easy to introduce another player to control the monsters and build the board and do the reading. If you've got somebody who um, who likes to do um, GMing for Dungeons and Dragons or any other role-playing games, um, they would probably quite enjoy that. Although they might feel a little bit constrained because they're working only from from pre-existing stories. And that's the other thing with this game: um, there's no random dungeon generator and there's no no real way to expand the from the, the missions that you get in the box but that's okay because the missions that are there are really really replayable um, and you can change heroes and things like that um, the game came with six heroes um, and also in the back of the book there was um, rules for four more heroes that for reasons known only to Games Workshop, they didn't bother creating the cards for. It would have been nice for them to stick the cards in the box, but they just put the rules in the back of the adventure book. So there was a Cinch Sorcerer Lord, 
a Slaughter Priest, a Knight Venator, and an Auric Runemaster. Uh, and you will notice that one of the hero heroes is actually a villain. And that's one of the other interesting things about Silver Tower is that the heroes aren't all heroic. Um, you can actually play with, with Chaos characters. Um, uh, I'll talk about extra characters that you can get later on, um, but there are Skaven you can be, you can be Orcs or Oryx. So it's it's not just, you know, you are the stalwart heroic, you know, good guys going in to fight the baddies, which is fun. But anyway, so um, these, these rules were in the back of the book. Um, if you've bought Silver Tower and you want more than the six heroes you get, you won't use all six heroes in any one adventure, you'll use up to four. So there's a little bit of uh, variation there, but um, if you want these as well, Games Workshop's second product that they released was a box called um, Mighty Warriors, and that was literally just miniatures. There was four miniatures in a box, and it was these four miniatures. So that's kind of a good next step um, to, to, to expand your roster of heroes if you really like Silver Tower and you want those extra hero options. Although be advised that the Zinch Sorcerer Lord will subsequently appear as the main villain in the Shadows Over Hammerhall box set. So if you do buy the Mighty Heroes box set, you will get that miniature twice. But that's okay because then you can use one as the villain and one as one as a hero. Um, or sell one on eBay for profit, for filthy lucre. So anyway, the heroes were the next thing that I bought. Um, and then the other thing that's in the back of the Silver Tower book is a list of additional exotic adversaries. There are Screamers, Flamers, an Exalted Flamer, and a Herald, and I'm really sorry about that glare. Um, there are full rules. Again, um, they didn't... There's no, no cards or anything. You have to just look at the back of the book or photocopy them out. I actually photocopied every monster page and laminated it and um wish i hadn't bothered due to um a, a later release that we'll talk about in a moment um games workshop never released uh, a box that contains just these miniatures but the best thing to do if you want to expand the monsters that you're going to be facing in the silver tower is to buy a box called um start collecting demons of Sinch, which actually contains um a full roster of screamers um because this, this exotic adversary group um, consists of one screamer per player up to a maximum of three. And the screamer's box contains three miniatures, so you get everything you need. So um, the Start Collecting Demons of Siege box set actually has a full roster of three screamers, it has three flamers, and it also has all of the bits and pieces to create an exalted flamer and a herald, and it also has a bunch of pink horrors in there as well if you feel like adding extra pink horrors to a game so it's a single box set um, in the UK it's 50 pounds and you can get a discount if you buy online from certain retailers which represents a massive saving over buying these pieces individually and it fills out your your silver tower enemy roster immediately you get everything so if you if you know if you've got silver tower if you've got enough heroes at the moment um and you want to expand the challenge that they're facing that um start collecting demons of siege box set is a really good place to go um if you don't want to invest in the whole lot in one go they do sell individual kits um they sell a box set of three screamers a box set of three um flamers and if you want the exalted flamer and the herald you have to buy the flaming chariot box set because that's where they come from they're not available in their own individual kits so anyway so that's silver tower it's really really good a little while after releasing silver tower games workshop released the silver tower hero cards pack and this was um, I thought a fantastic product. Um, some of my cards are missing because they're in various different things where I've got missions halfway undergoing and doing various different things with them. Um, it's basically just a big wedge of hero cards that covered, at that point in time, almost every plastic hero miniature that Games Workshop produces for the Age of Sigmar setting. Um, and you could buy this, this box, and if you've got other Games Workshop figures, you can immediately start using those in your games of Silver Tower as well. 
Or, of course, if you've got miniatures from other games, you can use these cards and just proxy in other miniatures. It's which means this box set represents really, really good value and massively expands your options for how you create your hero parties. Um, and these cards also have a benefit later on for another aspect of the game, which I'll get to in a moment. But um, I would say if you really like Silver Tower, one of the things that's, that's really good fun about Silver Tower is um, changing up your hero party and seeing how different heroes work with each other and, and bounce off each other and, and gain renown in different ways. Um, so having a big wedge of different heroes to pick from, it, it's a really good way of changing things up. Um, Especially as, as they um, they will develop in different ways as well. One of my favourite things about Silver Tower is the way that heroes level up. Games Workshop made a conscious con uh, a conscious decision to not have heroes start out weak and build up. They start out strong and they get stronger. So you never build up your base stats. Your base stats never change. Um, but you gain new skills. Every time you get 10 renown from doing different heroic things, um, you get to draw a new skill and... Certain heroes um, have an affinity for certain types of skills, which gives them additional benefits. Um, but then each time you get a new skill, you can only have so many skills at one time. So you have to get rid of other skills and gradually you evolve a character that is suited to your playstyle, but also suited to their particular traits. So having lots of different heroes to pick from um, really sort of emphasizes that, that sort of character progression and team building element of the game that I really like. And I think it's very, very clever. So that is a worthwhile purchase. Um, you get, I can't remember how many hero, extra heroes you get in the box. Um, 43 additional heroes, which is massive. And the good thing is it also contains um, cards for those heroes that were in the back of the Silver Tower book. So you don't have to worry about photocopying them and everything else and laminating them. So that's a really good product. The next product that Games Workshop released in the series was Warhammer Quest Shadows of a Hammerhall, which is a standalone game, but also it can be treated as an expansion to Silver Tower. It is an evolution of the rules, slightly. Um, it introduces a few new concepts and irons out a few of the ones from Silver Tower that aren't so great. It introduces a few rules like um, heroes that get getting uh, grievous injuries that persist throughout an adventure. And it's a really good idea, I think, to take those rules that you like and port them backwards into Silver Tower so when you're playing Silver Tower you can use some of the Shadows over Hammerhall additional rules. Um, I'm trying to, trying to stand, hold this in such a way that you, it's not just reflect, reflecting everywhere but these are shiny boxes. Um, but yeah, Shadows over Hammerhall the main thing uh, to know is that it's no longer a cooperative game. It is like the other half of Silver Tower's coin. Um, the original Warhammer Quest from years ago had the option to play um, cooperatively or against a games master or solo. It had all those different options in the one box. And it's, uh, it's it, you can now still do that with what the new Warhammer Quest, but you need both boxes. Shadows of a Hammerhall gives you the experience where um, a games master has a map of a dungeon and the heroes go through the dungeon as they open doors the games master references the map lays out board sections there they know where secrets are such as traps and secret doors um, which don't really play into silver tower so much um, and obviously the games master controls all the monsters um, and I was disappointed at first that there was no cooperative play um, until I kind of until I played it really um, and I've been the games master while playing Shadows of a Hammer and I have had so much fun and I've really enjoyed being in control of the dungeon and controlling the monsters and knowing those secrets and watching my my team of players as they puzzle out what's going on and, and learn more about the story and I've just had a really really good time with that and of course if I want to play cooperatively I, I have Silver Tower to do that so it's a really it's really nice to have this sort of two sides of the same coin and yeah, Warhammer Quest Shadows of a Hammerhall is, it's really good fun. It's really, I know I keep saying that, it's really good fun, but it is. Um, I've, I've played it a lot um, and it introduces another, ty another type, 
other types I'm sorry I will put my teeth back in like I say battling a sore throat it's not helping but it introduces um, additional adversaries which again can also be used in the silver tower setting it introduces four new heroes um, which again can be used in the silver tower setting so uh, Owen's got extra skills and items and although the backs of the cards are different you can use those in silver tower as well you either just have to accept that the backs of the cards are different or find some plain back sleeves to disguise which box set they came from but this is a standalone game in its own right but also i it is an expansion not so much an expansion as a, an addition um you can like i say port across some of the rules you can port across all the heroes and monsters there's a lot of content in there for people who are mainly interested in silver tower um but i do recommend playing through the shadows of a hammerhall campaign um and having a go with games master rules because that's that's really good too <laughs> that's really good too um if you're still with the product line by this point This is another product that I think you're going to want to own. This is the Chaos Adversary cards. This is a relatively recent uh, release, and it's fantastic um, for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, it includes pretty much every um, uh, rules for pretty much every Chaos creature that Games Workshop makes at the moment, um, and handy dandy two-sided cards. So. Um, Prior to this card pack, all of the rules for the monsters were in the backs of the books. Um, like I say, in the back of the Silver Tower book or in the back of the Shadows of a Hammerhall book, and that was the fiddle. I had photocopied all of my monster references and laminated them. Um, so, but, you know, as, as annoying as that was, that I'd, I'd done all of that, um, I was very happy for Games Workshop to release a card pack that I could do away with all those photocopies and everything else and just have these tiny the, well they're not tiny they're, they're big cards but much smaller than a4 sheets of paper which is what i had before and um so you get a more convenient reference point for all of your monsters the pack contains reference cards for all of the monsters from silver tower all of the monsters for shadows of the hammerhole and also a bunch of extra monsters it's got a complete roster of skaven adversaries in there and also it's got a new thing um, they're like mighty adversaries which are basically boss monsters so there's chaos lords in there and there's slaughter priests and things like that so lots of extra content there and you know you can do cool things when you've got cards like if it's if you need to draw an exotic adversary you can shuffle the cards and just draw one randomly um, to see what you get or so it, it it makes the game more convenient to use um, it expands the amount of content because again if you don't have the particular miniatures you can use proxies but you know why wouldn't you have uh, why wouldn't you want the, the Games Workshop official miniatures they're, they're gorgeous I know what everyone's saying everyone's saying they're really expensive yes I know but they are they're gorgeous miniatures and this is a really good excuse to kind of pick and choose from other units of models that you might not otherwise have in your collection or might not otherwise have, get a chance to paint um there's no oryx or undead at the moment this is just chaos and, and like i say skaven is now classed as part of the chaos um faction so there's skaven in there as well really good pack of cards um it like i say it even has like the odd odd stuff from silver tower like the little um familiars and a card with the rules for introducing those into Hammerhall. So these are good for, again, whether you're playing Silver Tower, whenever it says um, you need to deploy a group of exotic adversaries, you can use any card from this pack. Um, it's also good if you're a games master and you're designing your own Shadows Over Hammerhall missions and maps because you've got all these rules that you can draw from. So that's a great product as well. And that's almost everything up to date. Um, Games Workshop have released several extra hero cards through White Dwarf um, since Silver Tower launched. Um, and some of those aren't currently available any other way. Um, for example, here's my, my Slambo card. Um, ridiculously overpowered Slambo. 
but yeah, he's I copied him out of my White Dwarf magazine and laminated him up. And I've got a few other characters that um, are only available at the moment from White Dwarf. There were there's a range of Dwarden steampunk dudes that are only available from an old White Dwarf magazine. Um, I don't know the exact specific issues. Um, I don't think you're missing out massively if you miss out on one or two of these hero cards. The, the, the heroes in Silver Tower, um, you know, there's so many of them now. You know, if you, if you don't have one or two of them, I don't think it's going to hinder your enjoyment of the game. Uh, I wouldn't say don't go out and buy Silver Tower because you can't get your Slambo hero card anywhere anymore. Um, and who knows, if they do another hero pack at some point in the future, which they might because they're constantly releasing new miniatures, then um, Slambo may make an appearance next time round. The only other thing um, that's turned up in White Dwarf, and this started in, this, in the December issue, 2017, um, they actually published the first of some new missions for Hammerhole. They call it Return to Hammerhole. And this is the December issue of White Dwarf magazine. Um, at the time of recording this, you should still be able to get this magazine. I do recommend it because it had some cards on the front for new treasure and skills and things like that for Hammerhole. Not a lot, just a couple. Um, and it had some cards that are specifically for use in the adventures the Return to Hammerhall Adventures. Um, and what they've done, and it's really, really clever, is in in Silver Tower, the entire adventure takes place in the Silver Tower. There's no between missions thing. In Shadows of a Hammerhall, they went for a different approach and they went more for an advanced hero quest type approach where the whole campaign takes place in a single dungeon, but the single dungeon has lots of different levels that you can get to by going up and down stairs. Some of those stairs lead out to a city, and in the city you can have different experiences. You can gamble and drink and train and do all that sort of stuff, um, which is a really cool element of Shadows of a Hammerhall that, that I really like. Um, for these new missions, there's one mission in the December 2017 magazine. There's another one in the January 2018 magazine, and there will be a third one in the February 2018 magazine. Um, they introduced a new area in the city and when you go to that area you can actually um, sell your services as a sell sword and then go off on one of these ex these new missions i'm not going to reveal the mission it's under it's under this little flap here that says games master's eyes only so i'm not going to show the map because spoilers 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 um but yeah you can go to this area of the city you can sell your services you can go then do a complete side quest um, which has nothing to do with the main adventure from Shadows of a Hammerhole, um, except it allows you to build up your heroes and get new treasure and items and things like that. That's a really clever idea, and I hope they expand on that further, because being able to go back to a city and then linking off into other campaigns and other things like that, it's a really good way to... They can keep releasing box sets, which is like a new campaign that you plug in to the city mechanism. You know, you go to the city, then you can go off and do a Shadows of a Hammerhole mission or you can go off and do whatever other missions they, they release. It's a really cool idea and this feels like a, a really cool mechanism that is potentially the tip of tip of an iceberg that I hope Games Workshop run with and I've just mixed all kinds of metaphors together there but fine. The other thing that um, they introduced in White Dwarf 2017 uh, December 2017 uh, was the concept of allies that you can hire again uh, sell swords that will come and help you for one mission you pay them um, and they actually included two new characters here you can actually use these characters as heroes or you can use them as as allies um, and the interesting thing with the ally system is you can use any of your hero cards so if you've got that silver tower hero card pack any of those cards that you're not currently using as a hero in your mission you can add them to you know, the uh, the options for available mercenaries. So you can have you go to the city, you go to the guild where you can hire a mercenary, just randomly deal three silver tower hero cards out and say to your party, those are the mercenaries that are available if you want to if you want to hire one. That's a really cool thing as well. 
And that's it really. So, I mean, if, you get, if you're brand new, you don't have any of the products yet, I do think Silver Tower is a great starting point because you get a lot of different monsters um, and you get six heroes and you get a really, really solid campaign that's self-contained um, and you can introduce um, a Games Master if you want to. Um, and then from there, um, Shadows of a Hammerhall is the, the flip side of the coin and it, you know, it gives you that Games Master experience, which I was you know, dubious that they cut out the co-op mode, but I love Shadows of a Hammerhall and I'm kind of falling down on the side of enjoying Hammerhall more than Silver Tower. But which is which I didn't think I would, but there we go. Um, and then you've got the adversary pack, the hero pack, those issues of White Dwarf that have some cool new content, uh, and and then you've you've got everything. Where does the product line go from here? Well, the one thing the product line doesn't do at the moment is it doesn't have a random dungeon generator. Silver Tower is mission based. Hammerhall is mission based. Um, there's no, um, like in the original Warhammer Quest from years ago, you had a deck of cards, um, which is a concept that um, Shadows of Brimstone emulated years later, where, you know, you go to a doorway, you draw a card that tells you what the next map is, and then you go to the next doorway, you draw a card that tells you what the next location is. Um, there's nothing, there's no option to do that at the moment in Warhammer Quest. I am looking at a way of doing it myself, and sort of with a random dungeon generator that I'm working on but I would love to see Games Workshop put out maybe even a third box because at the moment we don't have any Oryx and we don't have any undead we don't have destruction we don't have death enemies so another box with a whole new world but also with a random dungeon generator new enemies random dungeon generator that would be fantastic um, I would love to have a deck of cards that I can just say, okay, let's go on a random dungeon plunge and you just draw the cards and you face what comes at you. Um, that, that sort of play is usually quite random and a bit messy and doesn't necessarily hold up to extended play, but for quick games, I think that would be that would be a fantastic addition to the product line. Um, and like I say, destruction and death enemies would be great. Um, I would also like to see... Um, a setting which has heroic adversaries because um, you can have um, chaos heroes in this game. You can, you know, you can go into the temp into the into the temple or whatever with a goblin shaman and um, a blood slaughter priest from corn and a chaos sorcerer, and it would be nice to have a setting where you know you're heroes your assassins and other characters could uh there you go look quite a shame there you go so it'd be cool to have have options that um you could send these evil characters to go and face good guys um you know have a a city patrolled by some stormcast eternals or whatever um or you know units of free guild soldiers things like that city guards that would be cool i would like that a lot um and the other thing um that i would really like to see are bigger locations um shadows of a hammerhole the tiles are quite small it's quite cramped quite claustrophobic that's kind of by design um partly because you're spending all your time in a cramped confined dungeon but also some of the tiles, if um, a mission calls for a bigger area, like a big arena, the tiles are designed to tessellate together to make a bigger room. The problem with that is if you're doing um, a random dungeon generator like I'm trying to work on at the moment, there's no way to easily automate sticking together multiple rooms. Um, so you end up with just very small rooms. So, I would like to see um, some extra extra large areas, some outdoor areas, and some areas with some more interesting terrain, things to hide behind, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, it's a bit difficult with with Silver Tower because it doesn't really have um, true line of sight mechanisms. Uh, you can tend to hit whatever's in the room, 
but it's it's something that I would like to see some bigger rooms with um with that have space to allow larger groups of monsters. I mean, some of the new enemy cards allow you to spawn sort of like three d six worth of monsters. There's not really space for them at the moment on the existing boards, so maybe maybe that's what I would like um um a pack just a, a pack of tiles uh with um a set of cards for introducing them into a random dungeon generator that would be a great product um it would be great for games masters because they they have a load of extra tiles for when they're making their missions um i'm sure people who play dungeons and dragons stuff like that would probably also want them um but yeah a, a pack or just a wedge of nicely drawn dungeon tiles with larger areas and to an accompanying pack of cards for using them in a random dungeon generator i'd buy that um and I, you know i would also buy adventure books um if they want to release another co-op adventure book like the silver tower one that um that has a story that you can go through as a cooperative experience i'd be up for that as well so there's lots of things that i would like to see happen with this product line that i there's a lot of things i want games workshop to, to carry on doing i want them to support this product line i i i love it um but yeah i want to see destruction adversaries i want to see death adversaries i want to see order adversaries i would like to see another big box um with miniatures heroes a new setting i would like to see a packs of dungeon tiles um, bigger locations um, more options for games masters who want to create their own missions um, because there's not enough tiles at the moment to make really exciting diverse maps you, you so the more tiles that you have access to the better um, lots of things that I would like to see happen um, and and I think in terms of a setting there is huge potential for Warhammer Quest um, huge potential for it to continue expanding it <coughs> sorry continue expanding and I hope it does but I have talked for far too long um, and so I'm going to end now bye bye <laughs>